In format, we will look at bullets and numberings. When you click on bullets and numberings, you will see that you get this particular window. And in this particular window, the first step that you will see is the bullets tab, in which you are able to choose the types of bullets that you want to use in your documentation. So you can choose either one of it. And when you click on it, all you have to do is click OK or reset if you want to reset your whole bullets and numbering. If you want to use this particular one, just click on OK. The next you will see is the numbering type. There are different types of numbering options that has been given to you. So you can choose which is appropriate to your current document. On the other hand, outline shows you the subsets in which you can use for documentation. The different types of outlines that you can use. Then we have graphics. In graphics, there are different types of uh, graphics that you can use for your document when you have a subset or you want to put a bullet for your document. Then we have position. In position, you can choose the position and spacing of your paragraph or your sentence. You can choose a spacing to text, the minimum spacing text that you want. You can choose the figure and the number of alignment. Click on default, it will become default. If you don't want to put in the options that you have, we have another thing called options. In options, we have the format type where you can choose the numbering, whether you want it bullet or graphics or link graphics. You can choose from the options given to you here. You can choose the corrector style. Do you want bullets, internet link or placeholder, emphasis, so many different options given to you. You can choose corrector by clicking on this. This, you can choose your font type, choose one, you can see that there are different characters that you can use. Just choose which one you want and if you click on any of it, just click on OK. It will be there. And once you've chosen any of these tabs and you've chosen what options that you need for the document that you're doing, just click on OK. And you can see that it will be placed in your document. Once you've chosen the bullets and numbering, you can see that this small toolbar will appear. It's a shortcut toolbar in which you can use this toolbar for your bullets and numbering. You can choose bullets to on it or off it, or you can choose numbering on, numbering off. You can choose the arrow, demote one level, or demote one level with sub points. Insert unnumbered entry, move up, move down, move up with sub points, move down with sub points. Restart numbering and bullets and numbering. This is once you've chosen your format, you go to format and once you've chosen your bullets and numbering, as soon as it displays in your document, this particular toolbar will appear. It is a shortcut toolbar for you to, to do your numbering. You can even move this toolbar and place it up in your toolbar here. Therefore, you can immediately refer to this particular toolbar when you have bullets and numberings in your document. And to close it, just click on here and close toolbar and you can see that your toolbar will disappear. The next thing we will see in format is the columns. Click on the columns and you can see that you are given a window with the types of columns you can choose. You can choose from no column, one column to two column. You can choose from here, three, four, five, as many columns as you want. Once you choose um, two or more columns, it allows you to choose the width and spacing of the columns of each of your columns. So you can choose the spacing in here. And then you can choose to put a separate line if you want to for your columns. And you can choose from the thinnest to the thickest columns. Then you can choose the height and the position top. You can even choose to apply it in which page that you want the columns to appear and once you've done just click on OK and your columns will appear. As you can see, I have a two I will have a two column because I've chosen two columns. The next thing that we will see is drop caps. Click on drop caps and you can see a window that appears and this window allows the setting for drop caps. Click on it and you can see that you can put a capital letter, you can enlarge the capital letter for your document. You can the whole word to be in capital letters, you can choose the number of characters that you want as your drop caps, the lines, the space to text. You can choose even the contents, the text, what kind of text you want to be as your drop caps and the character style. There's different options of character style that you are able to get. 
So choose which one is appropriate for your document and once you've done, just click on OK. And you can see that drop caps have appeared in my documentation. The next thing we will look at is change case. There are different cases that you can change for your document, whether it's uppercase, lowercase, half width, full width, hiragana and katakana. The next thing that we will look at is the Asian layout. Once you click on the Asian layout, it gives you an Asian phonetic guide in which you can choose the base text or a ruby text. You can choose the alignment for this text, whether you want center, right, 010 zero, one, zero, or 1 to 1. You can choose the position where you want your Asian phonetic guide to be, whether in the top or the bottom. And you can choose the character of your text, whether you want it ruby, strong emphasis. Even you can click on styles. And then, as you can see in the styles, it gives you the style and formatting options in which you can choose first line, in then head headings, complement the kind of um, styles that you can use. You can go to character styles and you can choose the type of character styles that you want for the document. And you can choose uh, frame styles where you can put formula, frame, graphics, OLA, watermarks, or you can choose page style, how you want your page style to be. You can even put list styles, there's different list styles available to you. And if you put character styles, you can choose to fill format mode. You can choose from new style from selection. So once you've chosen the appropriate styles, just click on close and, we'll, and it will be saved into your Asian phonetic guide. You can even preview your Asian phonetic guide. Once you're satisfied with it, click on apply and apply to your document. The next thing we look at is background. You can put background color for your documentation. You have to just choose which background color that you want for the documentation. And then all you have to do is click on OK. The background color will be what you have chosen. The next thing you can do is auto format in, in format itself. You can click either to auto format while you're typing or apply it later on or apply and edit changes after you're finished your typing of your document. As a conclusion, we saw how to do bullets and numbering for a document, how to put columns in your document, to drop caps for the particular word or the particular paragraph. Then we saw Asian layout, how to do an Asian layout, how to put background for your document, and what type of auto format selection that you want for a document.